The Reliant Robin became something of a joke throughout its life. It was mocked and derided, used only fools and horses, and by the end it was even part of that infamous sketch on that BBC motoring programme that we won't mention. It somehow lived on in this form until 2001. So what did a choke-operated plastic three-wheeler have to live about in the early 21st century? Well, we're going to take this very late Reliant Robin for our first drive in a three-wheeler today and find out. Come on, Batman, let's get in this Robin. But first, our friends at Lancaster Insurance are running monthly giveaways. You can win all sorts, from experience days to tools, restaurant vouchers and tech. So click the link below at the end of the video to enter their latest competition. Right then, Phil, here we go. Yes. Out onto the road with one wheel missing. Let's um, actually, as we were waiting to pull out here, let's uh, put pay to that old rumour. Do they actually tip over? Well, well we let's, let's not test it completely, but... We're yeah. going to have a tight junction here, so we'll find out. Whee! Whoa. Whoa. There's definitely some lean there. There's some lean, I'd say. We didn't tip over, though. Yeah. They're not actually nearly as unstable as people say. No. I mean, if I flip the wheel from side to side now, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> All right, maybe there is a bit of wobble. Yeah. So let's talk a bit about the history of the Robin, I guess. Um, yes. It launched in 1953, originally as the Regal, Yes. Uh, developed by Reliant. Yes. And then the Robin name came about in 1973, I believe. Correct. Not cheap, were they? They cost more than a Mini when they were new. For that, you got right. fewer wheels. Yeah, so it seems quite poor value. That. Yeah, when you look at it in that way, particularly because also fiberglass body, so you're not even getting the, the cost of the steel in it. And was but it like a 750cc engine? Originally, yeah, an all alloy four cylinder developed by Coventry Climax, in fact. Right. And the engine has always been a talking point about the Reliant, regardless of what form it's in, because actually, it's a sweetie of an engine. If I just. It actually goes all right. What? It's quite loud, mainly because it's down by your feet. Yes. But. It's smooth, and it does actually... There's a decent amount of power there. It makes about 40 horsepower in most guys, and I think in this later shape one, it's about 50-ish, 55. And for an 850cc, because it grew to 850 in its later life, yeah. that's not bad, is it, really? I do have to pull you to task about the intro where you mentioned the Only Fools and Horses reference, because there will be someone. Del Boy and Rodney never drove a Reliant Robin. They drove a Regal Supervan. They did, Supervan. Regal Supervan, but much of the much, this Reliant three-wheeler. They are three-wheelers, that is true. And the reason why so many people call it a Robin is that was kind of the longest-lived name for these, because well, they called it a right. Robin initially, then it went to the Rialto. Rialto in 81, I think. And, and then, then in back 1989, to the Robin. it was the Robin again. And then you got this shape come along in the late 90s, and this lived on until 2001, would you believe? This was yes. a car you could buy in this century. And there was one very good reason why you could still buy them after so long, one yep. minor reason, and Broken. that was miners. Uh, because so many miners, particularly in the north of England, didn't have a car license, they only had a motorbike license. But because this is a three-wheeler, it's classed as a tricycle. As a, as a trike. And that yeah. meant you could actually drive it on a bike license. So yes, it was the same price as a Mini, but you couldn't drive a Mini on a bike license. You could this. So for the cold winters, the miners would get these instead, which were reliable, insulated, obviously, a lot warmer than a bike, yet a fantastic heater, and rust-proof because of that fiberglass body. Not to mention very light, so on a really snowy winter's day, they wouldn't get stuck in the snow, they just kind of skip over it. There's a lot to say for the appeal as a miner in the north of England in the winter, which is a very specific market, there's not really any car that does it better. It's not what you'd call spacious up front here. Well, it's not very spacious for me, and I'm in the driver's seat, but tell to me about your passenger seat position. <laughs> Bear in mind, you are not a tall man. Well, uh, I think we should call it a footwell, because you can fit one foot in it. The, my legs can stretch right out, well, it, my one leg can. It, it tapers, doesn't it? It's definitely off to one side. Oh. Yeah, the gear change is lovely, I have to say. Very mechanical, very clunky. That's Master a, MX-5 got nothing on this. It's got a Metro gear knob, that, by the looks it of it. It does. I think a lot of the switch gear, and uh, particularly in earlier Robins, was from Minis. Anyway, we're going on to a dual carriageway now, so let's see what that little 850 can do. It's actually going all right. That doesn't. That's not slow, considering this is an 850cc engine. That's Nought to tinnitus in about eight seconds. It's, it's quite noisy and droning, and it is only four speed, remember. This is a car you can buy in this century with a choke, manual choke, and a four speed manual gearbox. And 
and it certainly can't keep up with our Jaguar X350 camera car, that's for sure. No. It will sit on a motorway, I mean, this is deafening, but you're not a biker yourself. But let me tell you, doing this speed on a motorbike down here would be noisier and windier. So you can see the appeal for that minor audience. Yeah. In terms of the interior, I mean, it's clearly built by a company with very little cash to spare. It's very basic, all grey plastic. You could steer it with your knees, Joe. You could. There is not much space here, and I can't see half the switches. The fascia is just non-existent. It's just like it's bits of plastic just screwed into the bulkhead. Just generic gauges and generic off-the-shelf switches. I've seen similar switches in caravans, actually. They're really not uh, bespoke, are they? And by the end of its life, the Robin still wasn't a cheap car, so it was certainly not good value for money. But despite everything, despite the noise, despite the uh, instability, which as we go around this roundabout here, <laughs> we are leaning quite a lot. Something of a charm to it, I would say. Well, I have to say, you, you were laughing when you pulled it into the car park to do the intro. Yeah, because there are certain quirks. We the wheel then. We did, yeah, exactly. There are certain quirks of this chassis shape, because other three wheelers, like the Assetta, for example, but the two wheels at the front and one wheel at the back, which is known to be more stable. This has it the other way round, which means you really swing it into a corner, it'll pick up an inside wheel, and then of course you've only got one driven wheel on the ground. <laughs> About to roll over and you've got no power. Whoa. Certainly not for everyone, that's for sure. You wouldn't get everyone in here. I mean, it's got a bench seat at the back there, where I, I guess you get a couple of people in the back. See, you're coming round to it, because actually what we give up at space in the front, normally you get cars, Air XKR was a great example, loads of space in the front, no space in the back. This is the opposite. You do have to give up a bit of front end space, but you would get people in the back. I reckon you could sit behind yourself back there. I don't think you would get anyone in. I don't think you'd be get anyone willing to get in the back of it, put it that way. No, they're extra ballast. That's good. Okay. Stop you rolling over. Where are you going? You need to have very willing friends. I'm going to fling it around here. Whoa! Wow. <laughs> yeah, that can happen. Oh. <laughs> There's gonna, certainly a driving style to adjust gonna, to with the Robin. I'm going to Joe, I'm genuinely scared driving this thing. Are you actually? I just sort of think, <laughs> my goodness. I think it's hilarious fun. I think there's nothing else like this, that's for sure. And Yeah, for a reason. I'm not saying it had its place in the world in the late 90s, early 2000s, because it didn't. But, as a weekend classic to have a bit of fun in, I think it's great, because you can get so much fun at so modest speeds. Yep. And actually, it rides all right. I think it's quite comfortable. But all the things we like about a Mini, the lightweight, the chuckability, the revy little engine that is willing and light. And this engine was used in motorsport, not in Robbins, but the 750 Motor Club, which is a massive sort of sprint and race club, was built on using this engine. It is a sweetie, but I can I know what you mean. And to be fair, by this point in its life, after all the uh, only fools and horses jokes and all the thing about them rolling over, supposedly, on that uh, BBC motoring programme, which was staged, by the way. They don't actually roll over that easily. You can see why it was a bit of a joke. And indeed, by this point in its life, the late 90s, early 2000s, all the mines had closed. So there were no miners to buy these things. So actually, no one was buying them by the end. But it is huge fun at tiny speeds. And that's one of my favourite types of car, like minis, like little Fiats. Yep. I, this, as a driving experience, there's nothing else quite like it. It brings a smile to your face. As a laxative, there's not much to it as well. It's, it's, it's definitely something. Let's get in here quickly. Don't lift a wheel. Yeah, ah, oh, lifted a are. wheel there. <laughs> I think this is hilarious. I actually love it. I, I think we should buy it immediately. I think I if should. If for no other reason than it stops someone else owning it. <laughs> Listen, uh, do, you, do you like the Reliant Robin? In the comments, your thoughts about the much maligned three-wheeler. Anyway. I absolutely love it, but I totally get why it's not for everyone. But let us know below, love it or loathe it, tip it on its roof or drive it. Right, let's go for another run. I'm going again. Okay, great. Wish me luck. Woo! -hoo! This video is proudly sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. Give them a call on 01480 400 889 for an insurance quote on your classic car. And don't forget to click the link below to enter their latest competition.